My name is George from Manager, okay? I work as the manager for livestock managing under the larger ABCD program, accelerator virtual development program based in Nairobi, Kenya. And I contribute to uh, influencing decision makers as I work in Italy. And my story today will address that. I was born in the Rift Valley part of, uh, the northern part of Rift Valley of the Kenyan section, at a place called Endebes. And it's an African way of referring to end of the base. <laughs> and it was referring to the end of the base of Mount Elgon, which is a mountain that's on the western part of Kenya and Uganda border. At three years, we shifted um, to a new area. At that time, it was after Kenyan independence. And therefore, they were settling Africans uh, to the former uh, White Islands, as we used to refer to them in those days. And my father was a beneficiary of the settlement schemes. And we got a farm in a place called Cherangani. And as it were, that school settlements were, those small, uh, those large farms were divided to begin small scale holders who used to work for those uh, uh, white uh, farms. And therefore, it was my first interaction with multi-culture, multi-ethnic environment. And at 10 years old, my father decided to take me to a boarding school, primary school. The reason? That I was hanging out with boys whom, according to him, were not serious with education. <laughs> and he took me to a primary school that was based among pastoral uh, production um, uh, people uh, called the Pocots within the same neighborhood. And I stayed there for the next four years in my primary education and four years for my own levels. And at the end of the year, I was speaking the local language. That is Pokot language. For my A levels, I went to central Kenya, which is more or less Highland. And I went to a national school, for those who are Kenyan know that. These are schools that used to admit students from across the whole country. So I was exposed to another very elaborate multicultural uh, setup. And after two years, I joined another really multicultural class in the veterinary school in Boston, Europe, where I interacted with everybody from the country in the veterinary class for four years. And after I got my bachelor's degree in veterinary medicine, I got a job with the government of Kenya. And I was posted to a place called Moyale, which is the farthest north, northern point of Kenya at the border of Kenya and Ethiopia. It turned out that Moyale itself was also a multicultural environment. And besides, it was my first contact uh, with the, um, my Muslim colleagues and, 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 and producers. And looking at that point, I started appreciating what I had been prepared for all my life as I moved from one part of Kenya to the other one, interacting with different ethnic groups and different cultural environments. So here I arrived in Moyale, and after that, my veterinary charge decides that I need to go out and train camel keepers. There had been a place, there's a place called a North Hall in the general area of um, Masabit, in Moyale, Masabit. And there had been an, a recent outbreak of anthrax in sheep and goat. And those are also the, the, the people who keep camels. And I was asked by my charge to go and train uh, the herders on the dangers of anthrax to humans. There I go with my driver in a government Land Rover. And arriving, I meet elders sitting under a tree. There were about 20 to 30 elders. A big acacia tree, and each one of them was sitting on a traditional stool. That they had come with from their houses, waiting for this young, uh, graduate, energetic, uh, knowledgeable <laughs> veterinarian, for, direct from the university, they had been told. 
and they waited and special. And I went and uh, it was a nice environment. I talked to them and we blended immediately. And I could really collect this from my multicultural exposure. <coughs> and therefore I started training them on the dangers of really um, anthrax to humans, as a zoonotic disease. And within the one hour it was very exciting, very participatory, and everybody excited, including myself. But as I moved to the next session in an hour, somewhere midway, I realized the elders were no longer excited with my training. I never had why. For a moment I thought, well, let me tell them what I feel. And I told them through my translator, because it was not in, a, in my ethnic uh, community, that please tell the elders that I don't really understand why we are all, we are all of us are not moving at the pace we are moving. And tell them, I think they are very, very small. <laughs> that was the most defining moment of my profession. <laughs> Immediately, without wasting time, an elder shot up his hand. He was a relative old elder about 70 years old. And that was signaling that he wanted to talk. And my translator told me, yes, the elder says he wants to tell you something. And I said, yeah, go ahead. Let him tell me. And the elder stood up slowly, because he was quite elderly, using his uh, walking stick, and told, and told the translator, please tell the Daktari. Daktari is a Swahili word for doctor. Please tell the doctor this. It is not us who are slow. It is him who is too fast for us. <laughs> Colleagues, it is one of the greatest lessons I have ever learned in my life. And I have carried it all along with me. When I stepped back out of that situation momentarily, and I was able to uh, look at that lesson. And fast forward to uh, three years, nine months ago, I joined Ilwi, not as a researcher, but I came from the developing world. And armed with 22 years of regional and national development experience, and the elders, Lesson. The elder was called Elema Conchora. I think he was a genius, in my view. I went to Uri, and here I'm not a researcher, but I'm supposed, and that's what I do, I work with researchers to take innovations, technologies, and tested and proven management practices to scale. And then I come to that environment which is not my comfort zone, and I start wondering where do I start? with these great, eminent, wild, real scientists that I have to work with to take these innovations to scale. Wait a minute. I remember Eleva Kochora's lesson and what he told me. So I step back and tell myself, here it's me. I have to start with me. I have to evaluate myself on how I want to interact with the scientist to be able to do the job that we need to do, uh, both of us. And that lesson helped me to uh, uh, evaluate myself, helped me to interact with the scientists, helped me to start with myself to be able to do such a quick um, uh, trust building between me and the scientists. And uh, we started off working together, and those scientists I'm working with, they know that we, we done, we done so, so much uh, with them. And for this <coughs> lesson that I learned, I keep on asking myself, am I where I want to be? And if not, could it be that I'm not listening to the Elma Conchoras of this world? And I asked us, all of us, as every family, as we work towards our great calling of influencing policymakers. Are we where we would want to be as an institution? If not, is it because 
We are not a hearing distance of the Lema Conchoras of this world. Thank you. <laughs>